Hey, I'm Kelly Lewis. You're watching Geek Brief TV. This is Brief 424. Tuesday morning, Apple will announce new iPods. Wednesday morning, the world will end, thereby rendering new iPods useless. Which things should we talk about first? How about the whole world ending thing? Scientists at the European Center for Nuclear Research, CERN, have built a 17-mile ring 300 feet below the Earth. The ring starts in Marin, Switzerland, swings around through France, and then it's back home to Marin. It's called the Large Hadron Collider, and it's intended to test what happens when subatomic particles collide. The collider has been under construction for 13 years. It costs $8 billion, and all the equipment inside will generate 3 million DVDs worth of data a year. They fired up for the first collision on Wednesday. Theoretically, the collisions will create something new and verify theories about how mass happens. The creation of something new would mean physicists are right. If they see nothing, John Ellis, a CERN physicist, says, in some sense then, we theorists have been talking rubbish for the last 35 years. Some scientists warned the experiments could go awry and destroy the universe, but since more powerful collisions happen all the time in nature, I'm not too worried. What LHC provides is a way to witness what happens during one of these particle collisions. A part of the system includes a detector called the compact Myuan solenoid. It weighs 12,000 tons, making it the heaviest instrument ever made. It's the equivalent of a 60 megapixel digital camera that takes 40 million pictures a second. So if anything happens, physicists most likely will capture the data. The first experiment will be streamed live on the internet. I'll be there live just in case the world ends. Details are in the show notes at www.geekbrief.tv if you want to join me. And then there's this, a new nano. Kevin Rose says we'll see this announced as a new Nano, and we'll also see the announcement of iTunes 8. My sources say Kevin is right about his iTunes 8 predictions, but I'm skeptical about this being the shape of the new Nano. I've been reading the book Inside Steve's Brain. Apple develops hardware and software over the course of several drafts. Steve Jobs rules out designs that have usability flaws. The curvature of this screen and this shot and this shot reflects light in both photos, and it seems like it would be very reflective in any light, making the experience of watching video on it less than ideal. If I'm wrong, who cares? It's just a nano. I really expect to see something we haven't expected tomorrow. We've talked about Wednesday. We've talked about Tuesday. What about today? Today, a company called Plastic Logic will introduce an electronic reading device with an e-ink display about the size of an 8.5 by 11 piece of paper. The display is large enough that a traditional newspaper layout would make sense to people who like traditional newspaper layouts. The real point is that a bigger display provides publishers with much more flexibility, and the ebook reader from Plastic Logic is intended primarily for business documents, although it can store and display books and newspapers as well. It'll allow much greater flexibility with document types than we've seen with other readers so far. The new reader will go on sale next year and we'll start to see color e-ink devices by 2010. Remember real video and before that real audio? Now it's time for real DVD. It's a DVD ripping platform intended to survive the freedom stripping wrath of the MPAA. Functionality is extremely similar to my favorite DVD backup tool Drive-In from flip for mac both applications create a copy of your entire DVD on your hard drive, including extra features and DRM. Real DVD is Windows only, and Drive-In is Mac only. Real DVD will be released soon, and Drive-In is out of beta now. You can purchase a multi-seat license of Drive-In for $59 that allows you to play movies on up to five Macs, or a single-seat license that limits playback to a single Mac. I found conflicting information about what you can do with Real DVD. Movies can be ripped to a single PC for playback on that PC, or to an external hard drive for playback on any PC running an authorized copy of Real DVD. One place said additional authorized copies are $20 a pop, but I couldn't verify that on the Real DVD website. The legality of what you can do with both tools is attributed to a precedent-setting case won by Kaleidoscape when that company was sued by the DVD Copy Control Association. You may remember the judge in that case said, nothing in the agreement prevents you from making copies of DVDs. Nothing requires that a DVD be present during playback. We'll see how it all plays out in the future, and in the meantime, I'm going to make a donation to the Electronic Frontier Foundation, just in case. I'm Callie Lewis, thanks for watching, and thanks for supporting The Brief by using my promo codes at checkout when you register domain names at godaddy.com. GB1, GB2, or GB3. GB, think Gigabyte, or Geek Brief. Either way, thanks for using my code. There's no reason to be asleep when the world ends, is there? My straw isn't working.